Hi guys, Archie Luxury on the Paul Pluter channel. Today I'm doing paid review 23 QB25. This is a review update, a uh, an updated collection review for Jeremy. Quick wristwatch check. I'm wearing a two-tone bluesy ceramic. Okay, let's jump in. Hi Arch, hope you're doing well. The watch market has seen a good correction on popular models and has been slower in the last couple of months, though prices seem to have sort of stabilized. It is currently still a buyer's market, so, I mean, what the fuck, how does, it's, it's, it is still, it is currently still a buyer's market, so if you're looking to buy your next piece or holding, looking to do what that long awaiting trade in, I believe now is a good time to do it. Because of the rising interest rates, many households are under stress and are cutting back on discretionary spending. And of course, luxury products such as watches are hit by it. More people are selling so a buyer can get good deals. For me, this was a good mark, good moment to look at making some changes to my collection again, which I did. As you may recall from your last review you did for me, I had the following pieces in my collection. He had a Rolex Sea Dweller 4000 ceramic. A Bulgari Octo Finissimo Skeleton Ceramic. Fuck, I hate that watch. And a Rolex GMT Pepsi Ceramic. And also a Cartier Santos ADLC. I decided to sell off the, uh, the Bulgari Octo and the Cartier Santos. Thank God. On the Bulgari Octo, I lost a fair bit of money. Yes, you warned. I uh, fucking oath I told you about that. But it was not too bad. I was actually the first time it was actually the first time in many years I lost a fair bit on a watch, but it was okay because I enjoyed the watch very much as I consider the skeleton version is a, still a very Ah oh, come on, forget the bullshit. You lost money. Other octos not so much. Also during the peak time in the watch market I sold a couple pieces of Vacheron and AP a Rolex where I more than doubled my money, so from that perspective, it's actually not too bad. With investing, you may, you always win some and you lose some. You cannot always pick winners only. So what did I buy recently? What did I recently buy? I kept the Rolex Sea Dweller because this is a piece. I would not sell easily, perhaps never. With the proceeds from the Cartier and the Bulgari, I decided to buy a Patek 6119G, the new 40mm Calatrava, with the grey dial and hobnail, or Clou de Paris bezel. Full set, unworn, beautiful watch, very classic Patek with some nostalgic features, paying some homage, uh, some homage, Oni Reviris, what the fuck, Calatrava versions. And love the manual wind as it gives you the right level of sentiment each time you interact with the watch. I, what the fuck, this guy goes on with bullshit, doesn't he? I therefore actually prefer manual wind watches over automatic ones. Fair enough, in the end, I agree on some of the paddocks. I must admit, I do like manual wind because you set it... You set it as you are wanting to wear it. And also, a lot of the manual wines, they don't have the date function, which I think is a plus, because you end up fucking it up, constantly trying to set the date right. In the high-end watch space, the movement of manual wine watches are usually better than decor better decorated and pleasing. Well, come on, get to the fuck be dead, this guy waffle. Waffle, waffle, waffles on. I got a fantastic deal and bought it under retail and even got the taxes back, so it was a great bargain. Not too long ago, I all of a sudden saw my grail, the Paddock 5170R. It's a manual wind chronograph with one of the most beautiful movements. The case back is just mesmerizing and a beautiful 3D effect when looking into the movement. Almost like a small, sophisticated city view in your watch. This watch has been on my radar for several years, but it's always been a bit out of my budget. And what... I was willing to spend on the watch. However, this time there was one on the market, which is pretty rare for Australian watch market. So I had to take a chance, especially because it was priced within my reach. And like you said, you got to go for the deal. 
This 5170R is with the silver white opaline dial, breguet numerals, and a brown crocodile strap. Again, very classic Patek. The size is almost the same as my Patek 6119G, but the lugs of the 5170R were better hanging on my wrist, so the fit was more perfect. Okay, they're both pretty fucking good watches. I mean, fuck, what are he waffles on? Waffle, waffle, waffle. Polly waffle. What I also like about the 5170 is the is for a chronograph the watch case is pretty thin the deal was especially attractive because the piece just came back from a full paddock service and was like brand new it therefore came with two years of paddock warranty service costs were by the way prohibitive five thousand which the previous owner paid so i am glad i didn't have to service it for the next six years or so the watch came with the original paddock box and booklets but no papers it was, I was not bothered uh, with that as it had the paddock servicing papers. I negotiated the deal favorably and traded in my paddock 6119G and my Rolex Pepsi GMT with some top up money for the 5170. I don't regret the trade in at all as I was finally got my dream watch. It was definitely worth the wait for the right moment and it feels extra good when it eventually when eventually was possible which i never thought that would be i now only have the paddock 5170r and the rolex sea dweller 4000 in my collection but i am extremely happy with this two-piece collection the paddock works well with my daily business attire when i go to the office the Paddock 5170 is very much an under-the-radar watch and does not scream attention. Only the true watch connoisseurs know what it is. And the Rolex works fine for the casual weekend occasion. I even swap the Rolex bracelet for a rubber B strap when it is summertime. Fun fact on the Paddock is that the price-wise on the secondary market, for some reason the prices in Europe and the US are significantly higher, perhaps because the demand for these rare discontinued model, produced only for a couple of years with the style format, is high in those regions. So what do you think, Arch? Give me your honest opinion, as you always do. And here's 50 bucks again, as you know. You don't do shit for free. Looking forward to the review on YouTube. Cheers, Jeremy. Holy shit, I think I know. <laughs> I think I know the guy who actually sold the 5170 to you. And, uh, yeah, I got to tell you what. I think uh, both sides got a good deal. Yes, yes. So what do I think there? 5170R. Absolutely beautiful watch. Can't argue with it. Probably one of the most beautiful Pateks of the modern era. Um, would I have swapped a 6119 for it? It's a hard decision. You know what? Only you can be... I think the 5170 is a much more rarer, scarcer watch for the true connoisseur. 6119 is a new size. I actually have a 5196G, white gold, uh, Calatrava, and... I love manual wine, simple Calatrava. But i got to be totally honest with you, Jeremy. I think you did the right thing. That actually... That's actually not a bad deal at all. You know what? To have a 5170, just... I think that's a beautiful, beautiful... It's just a quintessential beautiful paddock. It's a shame you got out of the Pepsi. The Pepsi would have been nice. That would have been a beautiful three-piece combo. A Sea Dweller 4000 ceramic, a Pepsi, and a Paddock 5170. But I suppose you can't always... Can't always get what you want! You can't always get what you want. Um, but what do I think? I think it's not bad. I think it's not bad at all. I think it's not bad. Um, believe it or not, this is how 
small the world is. I know the guy who originally had it. I know the dealer he sold it to. I know the guy who bought it from that dealer. And I know the guy, the dealer you just bought it from. And they're all good people, actually. They are all very good people. So I don't think anything is wrong. It's a good, it's a good deal. It's happy. I'm happy for everyone involved. So yeah, why not? Why not? Why not? What do I think? Oh, I think a 5170 are ah, long term, way, way more collectible than a 6119. Not that there's anything wrong with a 6119, 6119. I've got a 5196. To me, it's just a quintessential paddock. Um, but the 5170R, ah, I think is more special. Yes. I do. I think you did the right thing, to be completely honest with you. So what do I think? I think it's perfect. I would probably, I would like to see you add, add either, I'd add some sort of GMT, maybe Explorer 2, Batman or another Pepsi, doesn't really matter. But I think you've got a really lovely collection. I think you've done the right thing. I think you've done the right thing. Um... So what do I think of the deal? Hey, I'm glad you got out of that fucking Bulgari Octo Fermissimo shit. Get out of that. You got rid of the Cartier. Cartier is nothing special. Get out of that piece of shit. I mean, I like Cartier, but uh, nah. I think you did the right thing. Two piece. You know what? Maybe less is more. A fucking Sea Dweller 4000, which... I think it's one of the most quintessential, just beautiful. I had a friend of mine, good friend of mine, who actually, he said that was the best ceramic diver he's ever had. I tend to agree with him. You got the 5170R. Fuck, that's a beautiful watch. What would I add? I'd, I'd probably add an Explorer and be done with it. That's it. I'd add an Explorer Polar. Be done with it, happy. I think you did the right thing. 5170 is a fucking amazing... You know how few of those are available? They're so, so rare. I think it's priced pretty well. That's on the international scene. you got a bargain. So, you know what? I think you did the right thing. I think that's an absolute bargain. I love it. I love it. I actually know all the people involved in this deal. Can you believe that? But I think, it's, I think to be honest with you, Jeremy, I think you did the right thing. That's a fucking amazing. Less is more. A fucking Sea Dweller 4000 and a fucking... Um, sea Dweller 4000, a Paddock 5170R. Absolutely amazing. So, yeah, go for it. 100% with you. Guys, that's the paid review today. Like, subscribe, tell your friends. Don't be afraid to put a few comments, good, bad, or ugly. Don't forget, guys, I can't survive on Google Ads. I need more paid reviews to survive. Without your support, I would sink. So please get a paid review done today. 50 US dollars, dollars. Get a paid review, and I will tell you the good, the bad, the ugly. I'm Archie Luxury. See you in the next one. Hi guys, it's Archie Luxury. Guys, I want to talk to you about David SW. David SW, David SW. Guys, if you are in America, if you are looking for a Rolex watch of your dreams, in fact, if you're looking for a contemporary modern wristwatch, I strongly advise you to look at David SW. Guys, don't play the dealer games. Don't bring in chocolates or crispy creams for your dealer hoping to get a rolex at retail it's futile please guys save your dignity keep some pride go to david sw i would highly recommend david sw david sw if you're in america and you're looking for a watch go to david sw david sw David S.W. Hey guys, Archie Luxury on 
the YouTube sensation, the Paul Pluto channel. Guys, I need you to help me out, guys. I can't survive on Google Ads alone. I need you to request a paid review. 50 US dollars, look down in the description. 50 US dollars, re I will review your collection. I'll tell you what I think of it and I'll give you some pointers. The other thing is, guys, you can sponsor me on Patreon. Patreon allows you to pay a couple bucks a month, a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, whatever you want. And it keeps me going on YouTube because, guys, I'm in a niche. Nobody can make money out of the views I get. The views are crap because it's a small, specialized area. And I don't talk about garbage for the sake of views. Guys, sponsor me on Patreon. Look down below and I will see you in the next one. Yeah.